Hmm. Something's not right. <sighs> What's not right, Abed? We usually have a topic theme that actually kicks off every episode for us. Ahmed, for the last time, this is not some sitcom TV show, all right? This is real life. We are at a real school in real Colorado in the real United States of America. Jeff, don't be mean. It's his way of seeing the world and it helps him normalize the situation for himself. Well, I'm sorry, Annie. I didn't know you cared so much about me feeding into a factitious delusion. I care because it's not delusional and it's just his way of coping with things. And it's perfectly healthy, Abed. And also, Jeff, I think you're neglecting the fact that he has certain issues. Yeah, and I have overbearing good looks, so that doesn't make me think that the whole world is a television show. Well, either way, he's just expressing himself the way he feels most comfortable, and there's nothing wrong with it. Well, either way, I don't think any of us here have any actual real motivation to do anything today. Nonetheless, start off a so-called episode of our lives. You're right. I've been noticing a lack of enthusiasm between all of us lately. Well, not like anyone's been doing a very good job of hiding it. Could you maybe start us off with something so that we could get the story rolling for this one? I would love to, Op-Ed. But unfortunately, I think a lot of the viewers are getting tired of seeing the overbearingly charming leader fall to such idiocy at such frequent lengths. You're right. Troy, you be our star off. Yeah, sorry, Abed. I kind of want to take a step back from being at the forefront of this group all the time. Be the more subdued, mysterious character that just blends into the background. You might not even notice it's there. For some reason, is always wearing sunglasses inside. Wait, how exactly are you at the forefront of this group all the time? Exactly. I mean, we don't particularly pursue the stuff that you bring up, like, at a constant rate. Exactly. But you didn't answer my question. Exactly. So are you just going to keep saying exactly to seem like you know what you're talking about? Precisely. And besides, I'm not exactly good with coming up things on the spot anyway. I'm never going to forget my grandpa's eulogy at least three months ago. Alright, I get your point. Britta, you got any ideas? Why well, yes, Abed, I actually do have an idea. There's a protest going on there today at the campus, and I thought it would be the perfect setting for the starter off of one of our episodes. Oh, goody, what will it be this week? Save the starving dolphins, or stop the government from putting cameras in our rectums while we sleep? No, it's to hold the Mongolian government more accountable for the illegal capturing of Gobi Bears for bestiality enthusiasts in Asia. Uh, you're definitely not. Shirley, you got anything? Well, Abed, I would actually love it if we all pitched in and helped volunteer at my church later today. We're putting together donations to help stop the war in Somalia. Oh yeah, Shirley, because religion has helped prevent so many wars. <laughs> well, Britta, I definitely know who Jesus won't be saving from a fiery pit of eternal doom when the rapture comes. Okay. Any? what about you? Well, Abed, I was thinking maybe we could do something a little romantic with this one. Mm -hmm. Like maybe, I don't know, get a dating thing going in the group. Maybe set a nice, hot, young, attractive, straight-ace girl with a handsome, hunky guy. Well, the digital romance trope has actually been declining in ratings recently. We need something new, something fresh. Well, we can make it fresh and new. Like, for example, I could play the hot, attractive young girl, and, and Jeff could play the chiseled, ab, hunkulous, amazing... Pierce, what about you? Well, I think I got just the story for you, Abed. I've been working on it at some points in my free hours. It's about a white-toned silver fox who saves three Hispanic leather gimps from the clutches of an evil African gangbanger. Alright, what about Hickey? He's got a lot of dark shade stuff in his basket. could probably be a good storyline. Kid, I can tell you about finding a bathtub full of rotting flesh with a sick acid in it, and a serial killer getting shot 55 times in the ass with a magnum if you wanted. Now, I don't think that'll work. I insist on typically go for that sort of thing anymore, and with the rating of our show, we won't be able to exactly catch our target audience with it, or at least appropriately. <laughs> Gay lord. Elroy, do you have anything for us? Um, sorry, I'm a little bit confused here. What exactly is he trying to accomplish with this whole episode thing that he keeps doing? All right, Frankie, you're our last effort here. What do you got? Well, Abed, I don't usually condone stepping into this sort of behavior, but if you want, there's some school board stuff that needs to be attended to and reports and documents that need to be filed. That could potentially lead to some sort of interesting storyline. Look, can we all just drop this little gimmick for one day? I know it pleases Abed's little fantasy, but we got enough to deal with with Pelton parading around us all the time, and not that I've said that he's gonna walk in here. Date alert! 
Oh my god! Oh, don't look so put out to see me, Jeffrey. As your dean, it's my job to make sure that everything is okay here at Greendale, and I heard a bit of commotion from down the hall. So what's going on in here with all of you? Me, trying to politely as possible tell Abed that he has severe psychosis. Was this about the episode thing? Okay, I already told all of you that Duncan is looking into it. He's having frequent sessions with Abed to try and get it all sorted out. So just drive your attention away from that for now. And besides, I need you guys to do an important assignment from the school today. Great, yet another thing to add onto the list of things that I don't want to do today, or ever. Well, since you're so eager to know, Jeffrey, Greendale's board has been lacking in uh, funds recently, and definitely has nothing to do with my over-excessive wardrobe. So I was just thinking that you guys came up with some sort of fundraiser or campaign to get some money drawn up for the school board. Like, um, oh, I, I don't know, just throwing out there maybe a car wash of some kind? Yeah, down here, now you want to pose it? Huh? Oh, Jeffrey, come on. I know I paid to see you all hot and bothered with your top off there. I pay for you to never say that you paid for me to do something ever again. Did somebody say English stable alcoholic and hot? <sighs> I don't even think that your one track brain could have convinced you that someone was saying that, Duncan. Well, thank you, Britta. You've now just moved to the bottom of my list of stare at longingly thinking I can get with that. Professionally. Yeah, well, at least my body can feel something that yours clearly hasn't felt in a long time. That's what your mom said last night. Shut up, Leonard. I saw that thing you did that one time. Well, hello, Professor Duncan. Just out of curiosity for the study group here, they were wondering how Abed's sessions were coming. Unfortunately, our sessions aren't going to do much good anymore. I've determined that Abed is suffering from some sort of pre-childhood psychosis. Or at least that's what Wikipedia tells me. And unfortunately, is incurable, even with treatment. Oh. Oh, oh well. You tried. Professor Duncan, I think that Ava would really benefit if he kept going to. I mean, we can't just keep playing into this routine every day. Oh, I'm sorry, Shirley. Did you get a PhD in bribing your way through psychiatric schooling? Excuse me? No, you didn't. All right, so why don't you just leave it to the professionals, darling? As if your diagnostic skills could be classified as professionalism. All right, Britta, I'll diagnose two of you with something right now. Bitchiotitis and Annie, you have a constant lust disorder of trying to get into Jeff's pants. Do not! Unless I'm really stressed, and then I can't resist. Well, I can see you're all very engaged right now, so I'll be off going into my office. And definitely not to change wardrobes, like I said. Hey, Abba, do you remember when we brought everyone over to our apartment that one time and Jeff flipped that dice and you thought there was multiple timelines being caused by it? Totally. I'm still waiting for evil Abba to possibly show up into our timeline. Maybe through a portal machine. Or a time vortex machine. Or possibly both. Duncan, you're the school psychologist. Aren't you supposed to deal with issues like this? You're right, Winger. I should be dealing with issues like that. On Thursday surprise between 9 to 6, but until then I'll be at my house cozied up comfy with a book and drinking a nice big glass of royal tea. Or a bottle of gin and tonic. Toodaloo. What's up, bitches? Senor Chang in the house! Why? What's wrong, Wenger? Are you afraid of my holy presence? You must be considering how much all of you are failing my class by. Cheng, can't you get reprimanded for saying stuff like that to the students? <sighs> yeah, right. Like, this place is gonna stop me from being amazing. And even if they tried, they couldn't. You know why? Yes. But tell me anyway so I know we're on the exact same page. Because I am a living Dios, Pandero! Wow, today really is just murder my peace of mind day, isn't it? Hey, Britta, isn't it those Mongolians that are the dog eaters? Hey, racist. Culturally insensitive much? It's Chinese. So, Jeff, you still counting the days until the life regret sits in of deciding to come to this place? Trust me, Pierce. The life regret sent for me a long time ago. Oh, hey, Magnitude. Pop, pop! <laughs> Tell any of you that I slept with Eartha Kitt?